Hey guys, Joey Shanks here once again. And this week I'm gonna talk a little bit about creating proxy files. Now I'm working on this 4K concept teaser trailer to take with me to the Giant Screen Cinema Association Conference in San Francisco in mid-August. And I'm dealing with tons of 4K footage and it's really wearing down my computer for editing and doing post-processing and compositing, all sorts of stuff like that. So I've had to start making proxies. Never really done it before, but once I started doing it, it's not that bad. And it's almost really essential if you don't have a super fast computer that can handle the 4K stuff. And it just allows for a much smoother and quicker workflow. I'm just gonna go through the process of how I've been creating the proxies. There could be easier ways to do it. Could be better formats to do it, but this is how I do it. So uh, if you see something that you think I could be doing better or a different method I could be using, please let me know. And let's dive right into it. Okay, so let's make some proxies. We're gonna make a proxy of the clip I just recorded for this episode. So as you can see, if we go in here, proxy episode footage, this is our raw 4K clip. And it is quite large. Let's see if a VLC player will play it. Doesn't really like it much. And it's quite large, understandably so. So we could still even bring it into Premiere, and that's what I did. I brought it in, and then I dragged it into the sequence here. And this is at 1 8th resolution, and it's still super choppy. So if we're throwing effects on this or any other post filters or anything like that, it's going to slow it down quite a bit. And we don't want to be waiting on this for simple edits and so forth. So we need to make a proxy file of this clip. So what we want to do is o open Adobe Media Encoder. And I'm sure you can make proxies with uh, quite a few different kind of programs, but since I use Premiere, Adobe Media Encoder seems like the rational choice. So we want to add a file. So we are going to add that clip. And since it's an MXF file, I'm gonna keep it as an MXF file. If it did it as a QuickTime movie file, I would have kept it as a QuickTime movie file. And I'm not sure if that's the best way to do proxies, so let me know if which way is the most practical and works best for workflow. So usually when you do this, it's gonna have it set for QuickTime, just off the bat. So let's pretend like it wants to make it a QuickTime, but we don't want that. So I'm gonna click right here. I wanna choose this one, MXF. But if it was QuickTime, you could have done, used another QuickTime setting. Just, you could have made an H.264, a photo JPEG, anything like that. But I'm gonna do this guy. And I wanna make a 1080p proxy file of this 4K video clip. So, and there's, tons of DNX file formats. And since this is 24 frames a second, I'm going with the one that it gives me. And uh, you know, there's so many different, uh, there's all these different numbers. It seems like the lowest and I'm fine with the lowest. And I'm gonna keep it at 24 bit, just, and I'll talk about that a little bit later, just for sequence settings in Premiere, because I'm recording my audio at 24 bit. So all of this looks good. We're gonna hit OK. And what I could do, could do as well is I can go back here and I can make a preset for it. So if I click there, I could call this 4K MXF 24 frames a second. Because sometimes if you're doing it at 60, if you're shooting 60 frames a second footage, uh, you're gonna have to change it and you don't want to export as a 24 because that could throw some things off. So we got it set there. And it's gonna throw it right in our folder. And it's not gonna, since it's another MSX, since it's another MXF file, it's gonna throw a one over top of it. So it's the same name with a underscore one, which can be a bit of a pain because if I made a QuickTime movie, it would have been the same name dot MOV and that would have been a lot easier to reload footage in Premiere, but I kind of like keeping all the files MXF files, so we're gonna do it like that. So, 
We're gonna hit this green guy to start the transcoding. And this is a minute and 30 clip, so it shouldn't take too, too long. So let's see how long it'll take. Okay, that took about three minutes due to that clip. So like I said, it's not the greatest thing in the world to have to do proxies. It's kind of like transcoding before I use Premiere, turning you know H.264 files into ProRes LT files. But you're dealing with 4K, it's a pain, but with all, you know, with that pain comes 4K massive video clips that are really sweet in the long run and in the final product. So you just kind of have to deal with it. So, okay, so we have it in our timeline here. So this is still the 4K clip. Okay, so, and I'm going to go to my sequence settings. And for the IMAX, to make it more of a flat 16 by 9 aspect ratio, we changed this to 3996. Don't really worry about that net for now, but just to let you guys know. Okay, so I have it here, and it's still dragging because it's still the 4K clip. Now I'm going to right click here. I'm going to go to replace footage. And, and also, since it's not an MOV file, I know everyone that has a underscore one is going to be a proxy file. And if you can look at the sizes here, 3.3 gigs as compared to half a gig, that's quite a lot smaller. So we have that in here and you can see the 1080p file is a lot smaller. And what I do usually is I'll right click on it and I'll go to scale to frame size. So, and it is supposed to be the black around there because of the aspect ratio we're doing for the IMAX. Come on, 4K is not that big as the capable of the exact same thing that this is. As you can see, plays nice and smooth. And I can edit this and and do a tons of things and then when I'm ready and I got everything laid into place and I have effects put on it, I can now swap out the file. And let's put a let's even put an effect on it, a simple like a simple curves effect. Some contrast in here. Nothing crazy. A lot of contrast. Let's not maybe not that much. Okay. So and if if and if I was doing this with 4K footage trying to throw a trying to throw a filter on it, there's no way I could play this back in real time. This is full resolution for the proxy. And it's going to play even quicker if I go eighth resolution. So, I mean, it's so key to be able to just work with your footage and not get bogged down by all the, the little things that can affect the workflow that really affects your rhythm. So when I had this clip good to go and I'm ready to maybe export to then, so then I could take into After Effects, I'll then just swap them back out. And I know it will get a little confusing when you have lots of different clips in here. And that's why sometimes if you name them .mov so they all have the same name, you could highlight them all and I believe right click and replace all of them at the same time. But I don't mind for right now going clip by clip. It'll take five minutes if you have lots of clips, not a big deal. And I, I, and I know that there are proxies by the underscore one. So let's replace footage with this guy. And as you can see, that's our 4K file with the, still with the same filter on it, just a much higher resolution image. And if I try to play it back, it's not liking that. I hit play, it's dragging. So simple stuff, but I've never really took the time to make proxies. But like I said, with this 4K footage, it's imperative. So I hope you guys learned a little bit about proxies and I think you should incorporate it in your workflow, especially if you're working with 4K. But even if you have a slower, older computer, making proxies and making it 480p or 720p still can really help out in the long run of creating a smooth workflow if you have an old, you know, a, a computer that's a little more out of date. So uh, 
I've just got acquired the Sony FS7 and I've been messing around with that for the last week and a half and it's been really awesome. And I'll be putting out some episodes on m my adventures with that coming out pretty soon. So look forward to that and thanks for watching guys. And please comment in the section below and let me know of any proxy techniques that you guys use. Have a good one. Later.